Things are going well at the start of Season 7 if it does, and we've got a big match against Dunstrader of Slovakia in the Conference League qualifiers. Can we make it to the Conference League phase? Let's find out. Hold that title. Welcome back everybody to episode 29 of the Lichtenstein Challenge here with Fiddles and as I mentioned at the start of the video we start season 7 with a big match in the Conference League against Dunstrada of Slovakia. We'll go through the schedule and how the season has gone on so far, we'll also show you the transfers that have gone out and in of the club. Um, and then we will get straight into this match. As we can see from the league schedule, we've only played three games due to our um, European adventure in the Conference League. The first game was a 1-0 defeat to Luzerne. Um, this is pretty standard now. Luzerne do get um, our number in most games that they play against us. We've got an atrocious record against them since we've came into the Super League and um, it hasn't changed since then. But we then had a remarkable, I would say, victory away from home to Savet. 5-2 in the end. Um, we actually were 3-1 up at half-time thanks to an own goal for Savet. Sally and David Ozzo, our new signing from Crystal Palace, um, if you didn't see that in the last episode. They did equalise thanks to Albion Ajeti, but we then proceeded to go... 4-1 up thanks to a goal from Tobias Feniger. Jankovic um, got a, another goal in the 79th minute, but Noah Lampert making that 5-2, and we thoroughly deserved to beat these. They were not on their A-game, and um, it was a fantastic three points away from home. And then to round that off, we got a 0-0 draw at home to Basel. This was probably a fair result in the end. No particular um, outstanding chances or goals to show you but i'll take a draw against basel any day of the week at the moment and here is how we are looking in terms of the super league we are currently on four points after three games i'm not particularly worried that we're in 10th position because we have a number of games in hand our next game will be against toon um, and they will be played in between the games against dumstrada um, because at last time I played the uh, Viking game, if you do recall from uh, last season, we played the uh, they played the game offline in between the two um, matches. So I'll update you on um, how that goes and let's show you how we've got on in the Conference League. In the first match of the Conference League, we came up against a team called Pristina. Uh, I believe these are from Kosovo. Um, and we beat them 3-0 in their backyard. Goals from La Castle, Theo Goliard and Finn Sommer to make it 3-0 to take it home to Vidoz. And then at the Rhein Park Stadium, we followed that up with a 4-0 victory thanks to goals from Diogo Rocha, of all people, um, an own goal from one of their players, Maluku, and Tobias Feniger wrapping it up in the 85th minute, and that was a 7-0 aggregate win for us. And that took us into the third round of the qualifying round of the Europa Conference League. We then proceeded to get Neftisi um, of Azerbaijan in the Conference League third round. We played them away from home first. Um, and then the second leg will be played at the Rhine Park Stadium. And in our first game against Neftisi, we smashed them 6-0 away from home. Goals from Tobias Feniger, David Azou and our young Czech Republic uh, winger Mateji Kratravili. Uh, Kadri Mohamed also scored a own goal for ourselves, taking a 6 0 aggregate uh, away back to the Rhine Park Stadium. And you can probably guess we did make it through. Yep, we did make it through. It was a 3 1 win uh, at home, 9 1 on aggregate, thanks to three goals from Rene Bella. And that has put us on course for a game against Dumstrada. This is the team we're going to face in the Conference League fourth round qualifier. 
Dun Strada, um, they finished second in the league last season in Slovakia. That meant that they got a draw for the Europa League where they beat Makib Tel Aviv and Slavia Prague um, of the Czech Republic, or Czechia, as it's known now. Unfortunately for them, they lost 2-1 and 2-0 to Dynamo Kiev in the UEFA Europa League qualifiers. So that means they have dropped into the Conference League and hopefully they're going to get beat off us as well. I don't know much about the team, um, but it looks like a decent side anyway, especially since they've come second in the league for a number of seasons now. Um, it's been back-to-back -back second place finishes. Um, it looks like they've been in the top half of their respected league for a number of seasons now. So it's going to be a tough opposition. Just an update with regards to the transfers. You can probably notice uh, one of our players has left to go to Al Afetiak in uh, Saudi Arabia. Unfortunately, that player is Alexander Reykjavik. Um, so he got an offer from a number of teams. Um, I believe one of them was Gladbach, um, and the other team was, I think it was Eintracht Brunschkevik which is in Germany, um, but the team that wanted to sign him the most was uh, Steven Gerrard is currently managing these, I believe, Al Afetiak. Um And they came in with a 5.5 million offer with a number of added bonuses, which I will just show you in a moment. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, uh, Reykjavik has left us, played 70 games for us, 17 goals, we brought him in for 1.1 million. Originally, it was a loan deal, but his last season was very good for us in the Swiss Super League. Unfortunately, he will not be continuing his journey, um, and I don't believe he's ever going to turn into a Liechtenstein international, unfortunately. I think Poland will have to pick him up eventually. We'll keep an eye on him. Um, he will be a big miss. I am gutted to see him go but he has brought in a lot of money in terms of the transfer budget, which um, I have invested some of it in. So you'll probably remember from last season, we signed David Ozo on a free transfer from Crystal Palace. Um, I believe he'd been on loan at a number of clubs and hadn't really developed while he was at Palace, but I have to say it's been a very good signing. Um, he's already scored... A number of crucial goals for us in the Swiss Super League. His performances have been very good. And you can probably see at the bottom of the screen there, he scored two goals already in the Conference League, so I'm hoping that's going to continue. But I am really delighted with the signing. I'm hoping that Spain, Nigeria or England don't decide to pick him up. He has got a long way to go, though, um, in terms of Liechtenstein nationality. But hopefully he can develop and hopefully we can turn him into a Liechtenstein player. Fingers crossed. Um, I'm not sure if that'll be the case, but a man can dream. But he um, has impressed me so far. And then just a number of uh, free signings that we picked up. Um, I'm just going to go through these pretty quickly. So the first one is Victor Mouchel, who is a left-sided winger. Um, we have signed him from a team in France called U.S. Conakru, and if I butcher that name, I apologise. You know, I'm not great with um, team names. Um, but 19 years old, potential to develop, I think. Um, that was one of the reasons why I brought him in. And, to be fair, when he's been playing in their second team, he hasn't been doing too badly. So, hopefully, we can, um, we can develop him. The only thing that maybe worries me about him, and maybe... It's my mistake in terms of taking a punt on him as he's unambitious. Um, so, yeah, we are going to try our best to develop him. He's on a decent contract of 2032 anyway, so hopefully he can develop, hopefully he can get better. Um, the determination's high, so um, I don't see how he's unambitious, but we'll see. Then two signings from Luzerne. The first one is Etienne Trezinski. Um Basically a Swiss 21-year-old. Um, He's currently unhappy because I didn't loan him out um, to another team when the loan offer came in um, because it wasn't a very good offer. And he did get promised that he would go on loan. I am trying my best to uh, loan him out, but he's um, not getting much interest. But I think for a central defender, 
if he can improve his composure and, he, and some more of his mental attributes, he looks like a decent player for it. Facundo Cordero, um, a Liechtenstein and Argentinian national. Um, I've instantly loaned him out of Bowser's for two years. This signing is literally to basically shore up our numbers in terms of a Liechtenstein player. Um, he's also going to be registered for um, Swiss nationality. So by the time that he comes back on off loan from Bowser's, um, he's still going to have that under 21 rating. So maybe he can develop there. Who knows? But um, I'm okay paying... £475 a week for this guy um, the transfer was free um, so I can't really complain at that um, 5 foot 10 maybe more of a full back than a central defender but you never know but ok nothing to scream home about and then another freebie that we picked up is Paris Amakwa um, who used to play for Arsenal funnily enough um, didn't get a game but I like the potential of this guy Um a lot of high ratings in terms of his technique, his bravery, balance, natural fitness, off the ball as well. I like his vision and his work rate. Only thing that's maybe a little bit disappointing about him, but he's his flair. But hopefully, he's somebody we can develop. Um, and you know what? Maybe this guy might not end up being a, a, a proposition for the Liechtenstein national team. But if worse comes to worse, maybe we can develop him, and another English club pays stupid money for him. Um, <laughs> And we can sell them on for a profit. But overall, I'm happy with the signing. And finally, potentially our replacement for Reykjavik, Clemens Pudel. Um, I don't understand how this guy is German. That name sounds very French, doesn't it? Anyway, we have signed him from Fortuna Dusseldorf for around 1.2 million. Uh, used to play for Dortmund, played for the second team in Dusseldorf. Um... Do you know what? I like the look of him. Maybe his physicals need to improve and we need to get his technical ability up. Determination's high, bravery's high, player's okay, and his work rate and vision and off the ball does work well. So um, I think he's a good enough replacement. Whether or not he's going to be as good as Reykjavik is another question, but for 1.2 million, I don't think that's anything to really, uh, really worry ourselves about in terms of a transfer. Just before we get into the conference game, I just wanted to show you the balance. So we're currently over 5 million in terms of the transfer budget. And we've got about 17 grand in the wage budget. I don't see myself signing anybody in terms of a first team squad player. Um, but if somebody comes to me who looks potentially really good um, and is probably under the age of 20, then maybe we'll have a look at them and purchase them. Um, but we've got a, a bit of a war chest now, I would say, um, for the next couple of seasons with that sale from Reykjavik. Balance doesn't look too good, but hopefully that should improve if we get through to the Conference League phase. Um, fingers crossed that we do. So just as I mentioned as well, um, in between these two games against Dunstrade, you can probably see there where I'm circling at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, we have got a game against Toon, but I am not going to play that just because of the video length. Um, I want to get both games in for Dun Strera. So we'll be doing both those games and I'll update you um, with regards to the Toon game once we have finished that game offline. This is the team we're going to go with for the game against Dun Strera. We are playing away from home first. Um, it's pretty much um, the team that we've been playing all season. So that will be Hulsman, Siddiqui, Rocha, Rego, Berle, Lacasso, Lampert, Azoa, Sele, Sommer and Tobias Feniger. He has been the most um, informed goal scorer um, in terms of a striker at the moment. But um, Nicolau, Bella and Sani are right on his tails in case he messes up. And obviously we've got Oiden Denk waiting in the wings as well. So I'm just going to do the usual in terms of the opposition instructions and we'll see you in the game. Here we are and you can hear that conference league music. So Strera are going to go with a 4-4-2. We are going to go with our trusted 4-3-3. Um, as I showed you in the tactics section. And it looks like 
everybody in Strader have come out to support their team. We've brought a large contingency over from Liechtenstein. Here come the boys. Can we do it? Let's see. We are kicking off. Not a pass to uh, Rocha and Sadiqi there. Let's see how we get on. I have no idea what to expect from this game. I'm hoping that we'll do well. But let's just keep it on that positive mentality and uh, hopefully we can come away with a draw or a victory here. Yeah, that's the main thing, to take something back to Vidas. Unfortunately, we look like we're going to concede a corner straight away. I had a worry there that that might be a handball, but it doesn't look like that's been the case. The have again possession there. He looks offside. That was very sus, that I must admit, from that corner. But we've got another corner now anyway. We've cleared it very well. We're struggling to get rid of this. But we've got enough players in the box to uh, prevent a cross like that. Fenega needs to be doing better there. First couple of opening chances need to be... First couple of chances seem to be for straight at. They are definitely dominating the game. I'm going to drop us back to balance. Now they've got a free kick. Luckily that's not gone anywhere. They're pressing us really high here. I'm very tempted to go on a cautious mentality. Just 12 minutes in and they've, they've seemed to... They're up for it. You can tell already. Lampert to Holzman. That attack hasn't led to anything at the moment. The ball goes to Feniger, but he's got no support whatsoever. And he will come deep, which is good to see. Roche to Ozoa. Wins the ball back to Bias Feniger. Is he going to have a shot? Ooh! Sell it! Ooh! Wasn't expecting that. Was not expecting that, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit more even now. Hulsman is our man of the match at the moment. 27 minutes gone. They've scored... 29 minutes gone and they've got 6 shots, 5 on target. We have got 3 and 1 on target. So far, we're handling ourselves. We had a bit of a rocky start, but we're... Um, we seem to be coming back into this game. I'm going to encourage the team slightly. Burley with a corner. And we've been deadly all season from those corners. And Azua has scored. He is... Very good from corners. Berlier as well from the set pieces. That is a tremendous corner and nobody can handle Azor's height at the at the near post there. We're 1-0 up. Can we make it a half time? It looks like we might, and we have. First 20 minutes of that first half, we weren't good apart from Tobias Feniger, but we turned it around in the, the second half of the first half. And we scored another goal from a set piece, Lacazzo. 2-0 now. Berlier again from a set piece. And Lacazzo just rises above everybody else. They can't handle the set pieces this season. 2-0. To take away two for those. Oh my god, could we get a third here? Or am I being greedy? Maybe I am. Maybe I'm being a bit greedy there. Sadiqi. Azua. Lacasso. Sally. Feniger. My god, Tobias Feniger. If he gets that on target, I think there's no chance to keep us stopping that. Okay, 60 minutes. I'm just looking at three changes, potentially maybe four. Um, they all gonna be strikers, I think. So attackers, sorry. I think they're all gonna be attackers. So I'm gonna bring on, even though he's in can he's uh, complacent. We're gonna bring on Pudel as an attacker. First start. 
And we're also going to bring on the Batchki. We're going to move him to the left. Put Azua as a ball winner there. And then I think because he scored in the last couple of games in Europe, I'm going to bring Rene Bellar on. And they have now got a corner. Baku. Santos, Baku. I must say we're defending really well from their crosses and set pieces. Here's us now. Can we do something with this? Siddiqui. Nice play from Saleh. Fenega. Ball into Lampard. It's 3-0. What a goal. Maybe I didn't need to make those changes. I think I might cancel them, to be honest. That was a lovely goal, that. Seller from the halfway line. Siddiqui finds Fenega, and that... It was almost a... That was a Cruyff turner. I'm sure of it. And Lampert just dinks it in. 3 nil. I was not expecting this. I must admit. I am not going to proceed with those changes. No. Um, I think we are going to bring on our new signing though. I think that's the only change I'm going to make. And Siddiqui's made that assist there. Bloody hell, I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting a bit of trouble, to be honest. We are beating Strader in their backyard at the moment. Need to do something. Can't get past us at the moment. Marinetti. And we conceded. Simonenka. I've got one back. But we have got that two goal cushion. Let's settle down. It's not the end of the world. I think Sadiqi might come off as well as Lacasse, so I'm just having a look there. Just to see, we've got a couple of players tired as well. Um, the Bachki, I think. Lacasse for, I think, just. Johannesson, I think. Just to give him some game time a little bit. And Julian Keller as well. We'll bring him on. I've just got to be a slightly mindful that we've got the game against Toon coming up, so. I'm just going to be uh, a little bit cautious with that. I'm doing very well here. I was not expecting this. Anyway, he has Keller with a throw-in. Almost looking like he wanted a long throw-in there, didn't he? Dabachki. Oh! Pudel! I was going to make a pun there, but... Ugh. Could have been four. And, of course, they've equalised Daniel Gonzalez. He might be offside, though. Nope, doesn't look like it. <laughs> now we've only got a one goal cushion. Who's keeping him on side? Is it Rocha? There we go. Damn it! We have that cushion. Let's go a bit cautious. Burley with a corner though. Oh, Rochanelli. He's been really good with corners this year for some reason. How long we got left? Five minutes. We can bring one sub on. I don't see the point now. Well. I'll take I'll take the victory, put it that way, but I'm disappointed that it's been a 3-2 win there rather than a 3-1 or a 3-0. Um we've got the advantage going back to uh Back to the Rain Park Stadium. We have got the advantage. So, what I'm going to do, um, everybody, is we're going to play this game offline now, FC Toon. And um, we will be back for the home tie against Strera. So, I'll see you in a moment. As you can see, we got a 0-0 draw against Toon. Um, probably a fair result. Unfortunately, Ryan Johannesson missed a penalty in the 23rd minute. And I must admit, 
I didn't have any confidence in him taking the penalty. He's not somebody I would associate with us giving him the penalty. I don't know why that's gone to the corner there. Apologies. So I don't know why Austin Sarney or anybody else decided not to take that. But as you can see, in both of the teams, it's mainly been the defence that have been the best players. We'll take a point, certainly, and um, we'll move on from this. But now, we've got the big game against you know who. Just a bit of transfer news with regards um, to Ricardo de Curtis. Um, he has left the club and went to Augsburg. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get a lot of money for him. It was only around 300k. Had really good potential, this guy, but I just I think I fell out of him basically on the fact that he couldn't get to Hoffenheim. So we'll see him on his way. Um, maybe we might re-engage signing him um, in the not-too-distant future. I'll keep an eye on him, see how he develops this season, especially with Augsburg. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to bring you that update between um, the last game and the Strata game. This is it. Um, we're going with the same team that beat them 3-2 in Slovakia. Um, we're going with our 4-3-3. Um, Strada are going back with a 4-4-2. We are 3-2 up on aggregate. Hopefully we can do it. It's been a long time since we've got the league phase of the Conference League. Fingers crossed tonight is the night that we get into the league phase for only the second time in my managerial career as the Dose manager. Unfortunately, nobody has turned out for us um, at the Rain Park Stadion. Not particularly great attendance here. But let's see how we get on. We started well. Mentality is on the positive. We have that one goal advantage at the moment. It'd be nice to make it two. But, um, hey, we'll see. No, Sadiqi's got an injury. That's a great way to start the game. I think we'll just bring on Julian Keller for that. Could have brought on Messonero, but I just want to keep in mind that he's a centre-back and uh, we've only got Rego and Roche at centre-back. I've just kept the same team that basically won it um, in Slovakia. So let's see how we get on. We've got a corner now, Berlay. It's looking for that Ozo header. Tobias Fenegal with a very easy tap in. Assist from Ozo as well. Tremendous. Just what we needed. Ugh. The way that's just opened their defence up. 1 0. 4 2 on our group. That's much better. Can we get um, a 2 0 though to make it 3? I'd like that cushion. For, unfortunately, with our previous experience in the Europa League, and I'll just wait until this highlight's gone and then I'll explain what I was going to say. Anyway, it's Lampert. I was hoping he was going to cross that in for somebody there. Rego, anyway. Azua. Back to Rego, Lacasso. Back to Lampert. Berlay. Budel. When you sign in, Lampert, are you going to have a shot? And something I've just noticed is I've got Rego on the right hand side instead of Russia there, so I'm going to switch him around. Um, what I was going to say was I think it's just the look of the draw when it comes to. Um, Especially when you're in a lower nation to get like the um to get into the conference league. Um I found it before on other saves. It's just a bit of a it can be a bit of a struggle if you're sort of in one of these minor nations to get through to the uh, the league phases. Anyway, here's Fenegar. Keller, the castle. Pelé, Pudel. Great start. Even better that he scored on his... I think that's on his European debut for us. 
Nice little pass here. Burley finds him. Padel just slots it in. Makes it 2-0. 5-2 on aggregate. Much better. Two nil. I can't complain at all. Just slightly a little bit conscious of Burley's yellow card, and I'm just going to keep in mind some of our players as well. Right, I'm going to bring off um, Burley um, for Araji, and I'm also going to bring on the Batchki as well. To be fair, the has been all right in the last couple of games. But Azua is doing very well. I can instantly see a difference in the midfield with his performances. And I know it's not, you're not playing top tier like, um, you're not playing top tier in the in the Conference League. No disrespect to any team that's in the Conference League. I think it's a great competition, but the fact that he's getting 7.8 and stuff is very, very good to see. We're on 75 minutes now. And um, I'm surprised Strada or Strada haven't um, thrown the kitchen sink at I'm just conscious of fitness levels. I'm going to take Lacasso off for Johannesson. And I think we'll bring on... No, I think that's all I'm going to change for now. Anyway, we're back to Rego, Padel, Lampert, Feniger, Castle, Araji, Lampert. Nice little bit of play, this. Johannes, uh, sorry, uh, Feniger. Johannesson hasn't come on yet. Debatchki. He's got that in his locker. Lampert looks to be struggling a little bit with fitness, so I'll keep that in mind. He is the best Liechtenstein player that has come through the academy, Lampert. There's no question about it. I'm so glad he's developed really well over these last couple of seasons. And we conceded Semenka in the 81st minute. Hopefully that's a wake up call. Apologies for skipping the highlight there. Nice interception there. Can we do anything with it? Lampers, Debatchki, Keller, Rocha, Bat Keller, Debatchki. Azor, Abatsky, oh, Fenegaman, just keep it down. Keep it down, son. How many minutes have I added on time are we going to have? Three minutes. I'm going to slow it down completely. I'm going to drop back a bit and just waste the time, I think. And we are... We are in the Conference League phase. Thanks to goals from Tobias Feniger and Clemens Pudel. Wow. I didn't expect that. I must admit, I thought these would be... Uh, I thought they might have been a little bit of a... Too much for us. But let's see. I wonder if we're going to get our group. Let me just have a look. Right, we have got our fixtures revealed, so let's see. Oh, no, man. That's not what I want to see. Siddiqui out for six to nine months. That's his season over, I think. We're going to have to get somebody in, I think. Actually, no, we're not. No, we're not. I've already got in mind somebody I want to bring in. But I am getting recommended players now, so we'll see. 
I'm just going to send my assistant to the uh, qualifiers. So we are going to be awarded 2.5 million for that, which is huge. Right. Let us see who we've got. Spoiler there a little bit, sorry. Oh, okay. That's that's interesting. So we've got Hamcam of Norway, Slavia Prague at home, Aris away, and then Botev Plovediv. And then we've got um an old four in a Viking away from home. And then the final game will be Flora of Estonia. So let's have a look. So I think we've avoided some of the big teams there, like Aston Villa, Utrecht, Copenhagen, Malmo. Um, I was going to see if there was any predictions, but it doesn't look like there is. I think we've I think we've avoided some really big teams there. So I'm not I'm not too I'm not too disheartened by that. My my big question to you guys, I think it's the first game's gonna have to be Slavia Prague, isn't it? Surely? Or do we do ham cam? Um I want to get as many I want to get as many European games into the season. So any so we're just gonna miss off Super League matches for the time being because we've played everybody pretty much um, in in the Super League. So who do we play? Do we play Hamcam first or do we play Slavia Prague at home? Slavia Prague seems more appealing to me, and then. You know, do we play, do we do, to be honest, what we could do is we could do Slavia Prague um, and then we could do either of Aris or Boatev. But just looking at the matches in between in December, we could miss the young boys match like I did today and then do Flora and Viking. Especially that might be important if we're trying to qualify. Seriously, let me, anybody who's watching the video, let me know what you would do in terms of the next match. I'm happy to play the Hound Cam game, but if you think Slavia Prague is a better um, a better match, then we'll, we'll, we'll race through these and we'll play the Slavia Prague match. And then I think we'll probably do Boatev, unless people want to see Aris. And then I think we'll do what I said we'd do where Young Boys game off YouTube and do the final game, which will be Flora at home. But yeah, it's it's not... I don't think that's impossible for us to qualify, but I mean, the last time... The last time we were in the Conference League, was that 25, 26? Yeah. And... We lost two games, so I think we're going to have to win three games to qualify and avoid defeat, basically, in all of them, all the other ones. Um, but yeah, it's not been since 2025, 20, 26 that we've played in the Conference League phase, so that is now, so it's been four seasons. Been four seasons since we've been in the conference league, but let me know out of the available games which ones you'd like to see, and um, we'll do them. Well, a tremendous evening in Vidos at the Rhine Park Stadium. We are in the conference league league phase, and I'm really looking forward to see how we we'll get on in that competition. As always, if you have enjoyed the video, please make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel, especially if you're new. That would be greatly appreciated. And um, yes, please do let me know, if you're watching the video, please do let me know which team we should play first and what teams you want me to see. Do you want me to um, do the Slavia Prague match or Ham Cam? And then do you want to see the other two teams, for example, um, Aris? 
and the Bulgarian side, I've forgotten their name. Um, and then Viking and then the team from Estonia as well. Um, so seriously, let me know what you want to say on the channel because it's all down to you as well as down to me. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. I'm really interested to see what people want and we'll get straight into it. But as always, everyone, take it easy. Stay safe.